now what exactly is climate change climate change is a phenomena wherein it has been a steady change in steady increasing temperature of the globe has been uh, noted in last 60 to 70 years and not only temperature it, it is also leading to change in climate patterns that is more serious and all this is likely to lead to severe climatic conditions like cyclone excessive rains droughts sea level rise disease outbreaks loss in food grain production and all that this graph shows the uh, observation of six international bodies now what is the reason for this problem again there is a direct correlation with the carbon dioxide level the entire problem of global warming climate change is basically related with carbon dioxide as you can see it has risen from 320 ppm ppm means parts per million to now something around 420 the earlier slide though depicts the problem to some extent but it does not show the complete picture this you can see the carbon dioxide level that we have already reached that is 420 ppm friends you may be surprised to know that we have never been in this situation for last 8 lakh years now what is the what are the possible solution to the problem the main crux friends again and again i am telling it is co2 level so we need to reduce co2 at any cost so first there are two now components here one is reducing the emission for reducing the emission there are four r strategy is uh, can be used switching to renewable energy and another which we all can do is interestingly there is one mission known as life mission initiated by our prime minister it talks about all these components reduce your consumption reuse your things and recycle as much as possible so these strategies are very simple and we all must use it but now coming to there is another thing sequestration sequestration is basically taking out co2 from atmosphere in some manner chemical physical and store it somewhere else so that carbon dioxide level goes down now here i want to make three claims and i'll be proving it one by one first is reducing the co2 emission alone cannot reduce its level for that we must sequester more co2 than what we emit this is one claim i uh, first claim that i make and when it comes to sequestration only trees can offer long-term and hence effective sequestration third not only tree planting its sustainable harvesting is also important coming to first claim why sequestration sequestration is essential let's understand this figure there is a line going from 320 ppm touching 420 and going above this is the co2 level which is likely to go in this manner if we do not do anything second line is if we are able to reduce the reduce our emissions by 50 percent then it is a second line third line is in best possible scenario if we reduce our emission level to zero that is zero emission level then also we will remain at 420 so reducing the emission is not same as reducing the co2 level to reduce co2 level you need to sequester if you just focus on reducing the emission all you are doing is you are delaying the uh, whole thing that's all the level at which you would have reached in one year if you reduce your emission by 50 percent you will reach that level in two years that's all coming to second thing this is important and if you understand this thing probably my job will be done while it might look a lot of chemistry but believe me the equation that i'm showing is probably the first equation you must have learned in your life this is taught in class third and fourth we all know that trees sequestered they take in carbon dioxide give out oxygen the process is known as photosynthesis but probably we did not relook it the way we should have the process carbon dioxide plus water in presence of sunlight green plants convert into what is known as glucose and side by side give oxygen this is known as photosynthesis everyone knows it there is another process going in the, the reverse direction in which the glucose is consumed and again we give out co2 and water while we are talking your people are sitting listening to me we all are doing this the second uh, uh, equation 
we are consuming glucose and giving out CO2. This is constantly being done by each and every living being, oh, whether plant or animal. This equation also happens when we burn plants or it decomposes. So this way we assume that all plants are doing sequestration by taking out CO2 and converting into C6H12O6 that is glucose. In plants what happens? Partially it gets, it polymerizes and it converts to cellulose which we see biomass, leaves, twigs, the trunk etc that is the biomass. That is once it gets logged into cellulose things are slightly better because then no one can eat it easily. There are very few micro found in ruminants, guts of ruminants that can uh, what you call split these cellulose uh, uh, compounds and uh, make it digestible kind of thing. But otherwise it is not, it cannot be eaten by any animal or uh, even us, we cannot eat. Now what happens when it comes to cellulose conversion? There are two kind of cellulose conversion. What is, one is, one has got smaller life like your grass, agriculture, this thing, they do not have a longer life. While wood has longer life, it can easily last for hundreds of years. The easiest way to understand is, if I ask you, can you get me 100 kgs of 100 years old wood? You will say, yes, I have seen it in my ancestral house. You must have seen it at many places. But at the same time, if I ask you, can you bring me 5 kgs of 5 year old grass? You may be thinking where to get it. What happens with that cellulose is that it is either eaten away, either burnt or decomposed. So during that process, the entire CO2 which was logged for some time gets back to them. So in totality, only trees can actually sequester. This table planting if there is an idea of planting trees giving oxygen in night this is not possible just I told you then doing photosynthesis through artificial light again not possible because if you do it you will be producing more CO2 somewhere doing photosynthesis artificially on some machine theoretically it is possible though so far no one has done it but theoretically it is possible but again, with same logic, it will not be useful and it will be producing more CO2. What is then phytoplanktons? In case you know, they do photosynthesis, absolutely no issue with that. But since they do not convert into cellulose, they get eaten away fast, they again add CO2 to the atmosphere. So we are back to square one. Same problem with microalgae because for the reason I told you, though they might be doing photosynthesis, but since they are not converting into any cellulosic material, it will be consumed or it will decompose in no time. Grass also, grass has slightly longer life, but only few 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 years, not in uh, say hundreds of years that we want. Same applies for agriculture, biofuel also, same logic. Only trees can not only do photosynthesis, not only do conversion to cellulose, but also keep it for a longer time. They convert it in such forms that can be stored for longer time. There is another method, direct carbon capture. The idea is to capture CO2 directly from the atmosphere, store it in the geological formations inside Earth. This is the whole idea. What is the problem there? Problem is that CO2 is very, very minuscule in air. The the, we are, all are sitting here and discussing a problem. It is arising of, because of CO2, which is just 0.04% in volume terms. So taking it out in such manners, chemically or physically, is very energy consuming. What happens if you want to con uh, capture say one ton of CO2 this, by this method, you use 150 units of electricity. And for producing 150 units of electricity, you emit 1.4 tons of CO2. 
So I don't know how it is a solution. Someone if says ki, I'll use renewable, renewable energy, which they claim in their websites. Again, it is a foolish idea. If they have this capacity of renewable energy, it should be used to offset fossil fuel. It will save much more CO2 than by this method. It's a very, it gives a very paradoxical situation. You are capturing CO2. In the process, you are producing more CO2. You are producing more oil and producing more CO2. So how is this a solution? I don't know. But this is being talked and very, there are a lot many companies which are engaged in this. Now third point, which again might, as I told you, put some people on and is why are we talking about harvesting? But this is also friends important and it is important to understand why harvesting is essential, I would say. Normally we feel that we don't understand the growth cycle of a tree. Actually, it's not always increasing at same pace. It has got distinct three phases. One is juvenile phase where it grows at a slower rate. Then mature phase lasting for few decades. It grows at a very fast pace. And third phase known as senescent phase, it remains green but does not grow much in volume. If you, there's something called current annual increment. Basically, if you measure the increase in volume every year and plot it, it is known as current annual increment. It goes up and then goes down. Same thing if you put it in mean annual increment, that is total volume per year. So if, if, if we are talking about MI for a fifth year, total volume by five is MI for that year. That also goes up and then slightly goes down. It peaks at a point and that goes down. It can be proved mathematically that for an area, say one hectare, if for say 100 years you want maximum output from there, then you should plant trees, cut them at the rotation year. Rotation year is the point when MAI was peaking. You cut that, cut those trees at that point again regrow new trees, again cut them at the rotation year and keep on doing like this. It can be proved mathematically that the amount of biomass that can be produced from that area is maximum at that rotation age. Economics that is maximum volume, environment again maximum volume. As I told you, sequestration is basically equivalent to the biomass that is produced. So both go very well hand in hand. But friends, it is a fact whether you like it or not, there is a difference between green tree and a growing tree. While green, a tree remains green for a much longer time, it does not grow beyond an age. Or if you are so particular, it grows at a very, very minimal rate. And as I told you, if there is sequestration happening, then there must be an increase in biomass. Consequently, if there is no increase in biomass, then, then photosynthesis or the sequestration is not happening. If we understand this, then probably we can assimilate what I am talking. Another thing, mere cutting of trees does not emit CO2. CO2 is emitted only when it is burnt or decomposes. So if you avoid that, you cut tree, you use it in wood articles, like in this room, in your wooden furnitures, it remains slow. And in any case, if you do not remove it, they are all they are not doing any sequestration. They are just standing there green, helping wildlife, every, everything is there. But as far as global warming is concerned, they are not doing any good. Here I would like to point out one more very important point. I am not advo advocating this strategy for all the trees. There are areas which offer other more important ecosystem services like say protected areas, national park, 
hatcheries, other biodiversity rich areas where tree cutting, I am not advocating tree cutting there. They are they need to be preserved, they need to be monitored, they need to be conserved for some other reasons, other important reasons. But there are so many areas which can be used for production and definitely outside forest this strategy can be used. Again you can say so far so good, you were saying uh, biomass is equal to uh, sequestration and all that, that is all okay, but let's leave it there. Why? Harvest it. This I will try to answer in different manner. Suppose you don't cut trees. That means you will not get wood. So the things that you could have made by wood. You will have options like plastic, steel, aluminium, concrete and glass. They all will be emitting more CO2. There is no brainer. Only wood is carbon negative and everything else is carbon positive. Second and more important, land is a limited resource. So once we have agreed that on a, once the trees have achieved a particular age, they are actually not growing in volume, though they are not sequestering. So it is better to take them away, plant more trees, which will be doing more good. And harvesting makes it an economic activity, slow speed. Trees grow at very slow speed, fair enough. If speed is a problem, you increase the number. Net total will be same. If you want 100 times more effect, you plant 100 trees. If you want 1000 times plant 1000 trees, you will have same effect. The more you think, the more you will realize that on this planet, there is no reaction that takes in sunlight as energy and stores it in something else. So. There is absolutely no option and any other option if you try, it is just waste of time and money. Now I would like to conclude it. Friends, first of all, climate change is reality. Let's not ignore it. We have no more time to waste. We need to start working for the solutions and on seriously on that. Thing. The pace of change is too fast for nature to handle on itself. So we need to work for that. Obviously, we need to strive for zero emission, no denial in that, but that alone will not work. We need to focus on sequestration also. And when it comes to sequestration, tree is not one of many methods, tree is the only method. Wood is good, not just planting trees, it's sustainable harvesting. Thank you, friends. Please spread the love.